what is up you guys, and of course, welcome to Team Analysis and Battle, of course, with your truly, the Scandinavian Southland and Skyrender. And you can see on the screen where the battle starts in case you're not interested in how I'm gonna do defeat the Majunk, or better BMs. Now, it's a bit tricky doing this because I do make the Team Analysis before the battles, but decided that I have to switch things up, and the only way I can do just so is by recording this, having a battle later, include the video, and then basically figure out things from there. And um, yeah, with that said, uh, Majan Care, of course, is actually quite formidable with a rather defensive team with a few offensive mods to pressure me. Uh, we got, of course, Mew, Salamence, Keldeo, Mega Redactyls, Zabelize, Slurpuff, Rotom Maw, Axelgo, Dragology, Magmortar, Clinklang, and Hitmon Chan. Now, here's the thing as you guys can see on the screen, these are the guys I'm using. And uh, this is the same team I had against actually Dan and the Rose Ray Garden last week. And it's because they're just as functional here as they were there. Uh -huh. <laughs> so anyway, if you look at the team here, there really aren't that much that hit my Mega Dayinshi. Uh, I'm going to be able to EV it so much so that I would speed Keldeo. It's, it's going to be a timid set with Moonblast Earth Power because it hits for neutral and super effective damage against all of his team. Sableye is going to be super important for him, therefore it's going to be super important for me to use. Uh, against him, of course, we would like to rock, polish, and protect. Now, I'm kind of expecting him here to have Hitmonchan with Bullet Punch or Clink Clang and actually kind of try to set up on me, which could be extremely annoying. So, I would go with a Scarf Keldeo, which I don't necessarily can maneuver around too much. And uh, Mega Aerodactyl is uh, a mod that are faster. Um, so goes with Axelgor. Axelgor could have Giga Drain, so that's something I have to watch out for. But uh, outside of that, I should do fair here. I'm pretty sure I should do fair. Uh, so we're going to get very, very easy for this matchup. That goes also for Larios. Larios is at the same set as last week and uh, fast enough to outspeed Keldeo uh, with Yasha Berry this time. I figured out that I kind of needed Yasha Berry because if it comes to it, I need to stay in against Hitmonchan or Keldeo. If Hitmonchan is a Salt Vest, it can't take a Psyshock, I mean a Psychic, which I decided to use over Psyshock this time, which could be scary. Uh, but outside of that, Dragon Pulse, Psych Shock, Defog, and Healing Wish. So we're not necessarily going to look forward to trying to recover with uh, Latias. Basically, it's here for Defog, and in case you go for the likes of Tucker Spike with the Selgor or Dragology. But outside of that, it's going to be a mod that going to basically Healing Wish the mods that falls a bit too fast, which could be Dianchi. Uh, it definitely a mod I think could uh, get damage onto it. But outside of that, Latias not too important outside of Defogging. Outside of that, we're going to go with Jellicent, Hyper, Hyper Defensive haha, <laughs> set, uh, with Scald and Ice Beam actually for this matchup. I felt that that was probably better in Shadow Ball. Um, I'm I'm walling kill you to some extent anyway, so I don't see Shadow Ball being super important for the matchup, and I need to hit Rotom Maw in case it uses that uh, with super effective damage. So goes for Dragology too. I do believe both of those mods can take me off fairly nicely. And uh, we have Wakai Berry to be able to stay against the Hitmonchan and basically Willow Wisp that shit if he decided to do so. Mew could have synchronized, that's going to be annoying, but that's about it. Uh, Yellison can stay in against all of these matchups outside of, of course, Rotom Maw, which will leave Storm will KO us. So that's something I have to watch out for. But outside of that, shouldn't have really a problem. I, I'm also going to obviously with Wakai Berry be able to take a Magmortar Thunderbolt if I'm forced to. Then we have Tornadoes, fast enough to outspeed, what was that, do you believe Keldeo also? I don't think it needed to be much faster. So, uh, standard Assault Vest set basically checks uh, a lot of his team, and the only mod that can KO me freely would be the Mega Redactyl. And um, the set here was, let's see, what, Hurricane, Knockoff, um, Hurricane Knockoff, but Heat Wave of course. And then I believe we sell for, uh, I think it was uh, Hidden Power Ice actually for Salamence. Uh, just in case I wanted to play safe actually. But yeah, it, it's a timid, fairly nice set. It's very, very, very um, straightforward. It is probably walled by Assault with Dragology, but I have my means for that. Uh, next one is going to be Palace One with enough speed investment to actually creep. Uh, well, not creep, but actually it's faster than the Sableye and uh, I do believe Dragology so I don't need to worry about them. I'm naturally faster too, but a speed Dragology is not faster than my Pilots one. I think that was basically what I went with. Uh, Ice Shard, Ice Cold Crash, Earthquake, Rocks. I just need Rocks in this game. His only possible Defogger could be 
his uh, Salamence, which is um, KO'd in return if he decides to do so. So it's going to be very, very easy to use the Thalos Mon. It's very straightforward. So goes for Scallopede, which is the last Mon. Uh, after one Protect, or will one Speed Boost. I am faster than Excelgore. Outside of that, I am an Adamant set, which means if it's a Scarf Team and Keldeo, it will have Speed. But I didn't necessarily feel that that would be much of an issue. We have Megahorn, Earthquake, and Rock Slide together with Protect. And uh, basically, uh, if I kill Sableye, it kills everything with Rocks or Up, basically. Um, after Rocks, uh, Aerodactyl could survive a Rock Slide as a 98% chance of KOing it. But um, that shouldn't be an issue. It really shouldn't be. Outside of that, everything else is KO'd. Actually, Salamence with Intimidate can survive a Rock Slide, but yeah. I, I'm, I'm not scared of that too much. Uh, but yeah, that's the team preview and uh, next... Or actually, the team I've seen him bringing. Sorry about that. After that, I'm going to, of course, uh, post to where the battle starts. Now, anyway, I'm seeing Mew coming, Kelly coming, Aerodactyl coming, Sableye coming, Rotomaw coming, and Excelgore or Dragology. But knowing my opponent, Hitmonchan has to come. And um, I'm pretty sure that he will go for Excelgore over Dragology, but I really, really can't uh, make too much calls here. But Keldeo makes sense, Mew makes sense, Miracle makes sense, and Sableye makes sense. Outside of that, he just can bring whatever he likes, and I kind of expect to be... Well, hopefully not lose too fast. <laughs> it's basically it. Tainchi is going to play a primary role here, and I need as long as Tainchi is healthy, I should win this match. So, yeah, with that said... Battle. What's up, guys? And of course, well, well, actually, I don't need to do that now, do I? Uh, <laughs> I'm actually keeping that in. Uh, anyway, um, yeah, Carl actually did bring something down the line. What I was hoping for for this particular Wi-Fi battle. Now, Aerodactyl was super, super prominent. So I went for both, of course, Sableye and Mew. Not seeing Keldeo is super, 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 super nice because obviously I did fear Keldeo a whole lot. Now, I've seen Excelgore, it's going to be his possible lead, and there is no way of me actually going around that in any fashion. I kind of have to expect that out of him, as I am basically going to hope throughout this game that yeah, um, Excelgore at least are a Toxic Setter in some fashion, because like I said, I did fear Toxic Spike for this potential battle. Even though I have Scullipede and Defogging, it's still, it's still something that could weigh me down, of course, with like a Jelly SMP in the matchup, though, though not seeing it. Kind of ensures me that he has other way of dealing with the uh, LSN that the one I was going to figure out was be the most effective one. And uh, I need to get a rocks because I don't think, I think Mew is as possible defogger. That's about it. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to deal with the Dainji and I'm basically going to play as offensively as I can and hope I get something out of that. And I hope, of course, that he at least would excel Gore and uh, hoping he isn't a final gambit set because... That's something that I'm, I'm fearing. I'm fearing Final Gambit. Always fearing Final Gambit. So anyway, let's go. And yeah, of course, my lead looks at, as always as the same release. So all I'm gonna do is make the transition. So enjoy. So yeah, I'm obviously just gonna go for Protect, as he actually goes for Spikes, forgetting about the Magic Bound, which is awesome. Uh, I definitely needed that. Now here's the thing, I really can't stand in case he has Giga Drain, so I'm going to be forced to switch out, and I'm gonna go to Viralis, basically scouting the Bug Bus, or the possible Final Gambit. I can take a Final Gambit from... Uh, I, I do believe uh, enough HP investment to actually survive that, if he has it. We goes for U-Turn, which had me believe that, okay, it's probably not Final Gambit, as Sableye is gonna come in, Sableye is actually kind of neutralized as long as the energy is on the field, so the Genji is always gonna come in, even if he calls it or not. And the Neptunia, of course, the mighty, mighty the energy comes in, as he's gonna show me Call Mine. That is not too shabby, since even at plus two, it's still two hit KO due to the energy being just a threat of a mon, really, when it comes to Sableye. It's, it's probably one of the few mons that actually destroys Sableye's kind, kind of efficiently. So he's gonna switch out, go to Mark Mortar. I kinda wanted to go for Earth Power, but if it went for another Call Mine, then I actually would be in a very, very sticky situation. So Moonblast is still a 2 hit KO. Like, awesome. 
uh, it doesn't do, you know, the, the extra damage, but it did so much so for me to believe that that is not a Soul Fist, as he goes for Hidden Power Steel, I do assume, so there is really nothing for me here, I'm just gonna go for Dragon Pulse, as he goes for the one, which of course is Mew, and um, it took take this re Dragon Pulse really well, so much so that I'm just, yeah, that's special defensive, yeah, yeah, mm -mm, mm -hmm, mm, yeah, nice. So that's gonna be annoying to deal with as the battle transition because there are only so many things I can do to that outside of actually losing my mod. So he calls of course my switch out and goes for U-turn here as uh, that little extra HP ensures that if his max HP Selgor, I can't take this hit. So having that in mind, I was like, yo, he's gonna go for Finally Gabriel. I I I'm sure he's gonna go for it. So I'm just gonna go for the Necromedusa. As I call the final game, it's a booyah! Yes! That is so good. That means that we can probably, probably solve this. Now, like I said, I was fearing Giga Drain, which was kind of the reason I didn't want to switch into Jellison in the first place. As he goes for X, as I go for a Willow, I should say that Willow is, but a very stupid play because of the synchronized from you. I was definitely after was like, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, that was, that was wrong. <laughs> that, was, that was a bad play. So, but yeah, honestly, it did work out, luckily, I should say. As, um,. I have to switch out to, oh, who do you know, Dida Yenshi, and uh, he is finally caught up with that I am as predictable as, you know, a cat with a la laser pen, it, it, it's, he does the right play, go to melee jab, and here's the thing, bullet punch does guarantee KO me, <laughs> even without investments, I actually need to switch in Necromedusa, as he goes for a bullet punch, and that is great, because that doesn't do anything. <laughs> But um, I go for a Skull here, knowing that it's Super Mew or Willow yet again. As Skull looks to do close to 50%, it's not exactly that, but with Burn, I'm actually getting there. So having that in mind, uh, I decided to stay in here because I could see him have knockoff, but I think he has Dark Pulse. So as it goes for recover, uh, he's not going to recover more than the damage output I can do. So I was kind of trying to force him to realize that himself, but knowing Carl, we are just going to get a very very slow battle and I need to actually win this matchup um, because he can actually stall this for days and actually PP stall me so Taiyenji is the way to go and I kind of regret that I don't have Hex, that would have been so nice for that but I have to go to Taiyenji and I have to go for the Moon Blast and uh, Magmortar is no longer switching due to the spikes he set on him himself really on me which means that if it brings that in, it's going to fall as it brings that in as it falls. Because the thing is here, Moonblast, if it's a Scarf Set, which it was, actually has a max roll of 52%. I do get a crit here, but it definitely doesn't matter because I actually got a minimum roll the first time. So that's good to know. As Ninja come back and all is thinking, all right, I'll go for Protect. I, I try to be good here. I try to see him go for spikes as it goes for final gambit, I do know I went for Q-turn, but now expect okay, here comes the final gambit, it's either that or spikes, so I'm gonna go to Necromedusa as he goes for final gambit, so mmm, nailed it, as I go for spike the following turn, as I go for scald, and I get the, the scald mighty burn here, which is awesome, you know, mm -mm, exactly what I needed, ass, I am now gonna call him to go over a second layer of Spike because there is really no reason for him not to as he finally pulls off this freaking Axelgor mighty shenanigans that is Final Gambit and pretty much forced my Daenshi down to half HP. Now that's okay, but fuck it, <laughs> damn it, I so not needed that. As he goes to melee jab, there is really nothing to do for this particular matchup. Now, I did kinda expect him to go for a thunder punch or a bullet punch, I'll take both fairly well. As she double switch on me, going to frantic the... Well, what do you call it? The... Um, the flying dinosaur, <laughs> Aerodactyl. And uh, there is really nothing hindering me here from going for stealth rocks, as he goes for iron head which does a, the tough claw does a lot of damage i did not calc for that as I, I was i knew i could take two stone edges but iron head no ah -uh, we are not taking that now he does decide to switch out i'm not entirely sure why because it was an area of actually taken out now, obviously i shard would have forced another 50 percent hp but that's about it as melee jackman's here i'm just gonna uh-uh no -uh, we're not doing this 
going to go to Necromedusa. I am having my assets up, buddy. And so, um, he goes for Rapid Spin. So, so that obviously worked. Like I said, it was very defogging, but of course, Rapid Spin Hitmachan makes sense, right? As the one is going to come in. And of course, Necromedusa doing what he does best, and that is going for Skulls. As he scores a second burn, and I'm just face palming here because I kind of realize that shit. <laughs> That's gonna come back on me, sucker. But yeah, at this point, I'm basically he has to roost or suck ball or whatever. I have the option here to go into Scalipede and basically wrap the game up. Uh, I know that Sableye could take me on, but Megahorn actually is an 80% hit even if I'm burned, and I have other options afterwards to kind of pull this game off as. Uh, he goes for Roost, which is incredibly nice, and um, I was thinking, alright, he's gonna far us off there, Mew basically doesn't do anything for him this game anyway, and if I get one speed boost up, I am basically in a threatening area, so he needs to burn me with Sableye, as he switch out, goes to Sableye, which, like I said, 80% hit if I'm burned, but if I'm not burned, that's a guarantee KO, so goodbye Sableye. And that was awesome. I was like, mm -mm, finally, I, I think I won. I think this is over. This is definitely over. Yes, he's gonna go to melee jab, and um, I was kind of surprised he did go for that non air dactyl. But uh, melee jab is gonna get you know a few, few punches in. Not really. I was thinking he's gonna go for a <laughs> bullet punch there, which it obviously doesn't do. Wouldn't have saved him anyway. As here comes the air dactyl. And Aerodactyl has a 98% chance of being KO'd against me, so I'm just gonna go for that safe rock slide and basically kill him, as um, we don't kill him, but he gets flinched. Which you were thinking, alright, he's 6-0 by now, this is, this is it, this is the game, that was just a lucky roll, as I miss a rock slide, so... Ah, oh, fuck me, as he lasts the Stone Edge. So, some justice, obviously, he was lucky with the roll. And uh, is this, this is not a 6-0 at least, as I can just go to Forkbeard and go for that safe Ice Shard. He can't switch out anymore due to, uh, well, due to the hazards really. Due to the hazards, it's it's dead by default and he must roost to kind of survive, which he can sell again to against Palace Watch. So it's locked in there. So the one is his last mon, and I can just safely go to uh, my Tornadoes and basically wrap the game up. So. In short here, this was actually a very, very interesting game because I think Carl made he, he made a different team than I was expecting. I was definitely expecting him to play more defensively and to try to outmaneuver me by surviving the stamina. He decided not to take that route and I think that's both good and bad, but mostly bad due to the team I'm using. Since I am using a hyper offensive team like 9 times out of 10. I think losing the stamina for him is something that eventually made it easier for me to break through because I always had a switch and I always had a Pokemon that came in that did heavy damage and you know that kind of just transpired as a pretty much snowballing on him. Uh, not saying that the uh, call by any means played bad, but I think he made a few tougher calls that I probably think he shouldn't been forced to make in the first place. So yeah, outside of that. Um, Obviously, it's not a 6-0, which is both good and bad. Obviously, I wanted to you know, have another 6-0 that would have been so nice. But, you know, it is what it is. Uh, I missed, of course, the second rock slide. You know, one use rock slide because you don't want to miss and you miss. And obviously, I got the flinch, lucky flinch there. So, if anything, it's kind of justified, even though, like I said, it's, it was a 98% chance of me actually kicking him in, about, in the butt, basically. And that didn't happen, Aerodactyl actually survived. Therefore, I put Aerodactyl as his MVP for this specific battle because let's just face it as it is. That was kinda sweet. That was kinda cool. Not that it was gonna like save him throughout the game that Aerodactyl necessarily survived, but Aerodactyl was a um, stand tall threat against me because it would just keep coming back at me. Due to its speed, it outmaneuvered everything on my team, and you know it's it has that raw power to it. Sure, we have a risk of course with Stone Edge, which isn't the best move like ever but outside of that you know iron head was something that in california they did heavy damage on me for sure and um just outside of that aerodactyl's maneuverability and sheer uh, force alone for me is something else and very very threatening so if anything carl thank you so much for this battle i really enjoyed it and um we did actually battle for 15 minutes even though it was actually a 33 turn battle 
So he's a guy who definitely takes his time when it comes to which calls he makes. And um, yeah, I think he probably tried to predict as much as he could, but at the same time, there were a lot of risk versus the matchups he was actually facing. So I fully understand the situation and uh, it basically went according to plan my way, obviously, due to me actually just playing as offensive as I can and obviously once it broke through, it just wasn't, it, it was not man, it wasn't easy to stop basically is what I'm trying to say. Uh, having all, all this said, like I said, Carl, thank you so much for the game. I really, really enjoyed it and it's always a pleasure to battle you again. And if everybody's been watching, thank you for doing your show. Make, make sure to check out, of course, Carl's channel when I upload this game. Definitely looking forward to see his side of the battle. And with that said, guys, we are facing off against uh, the Durham Dragon next week and Leo. And he is actually the number one, so uh, let's actually change that since I'm actually number two at the moment. If anybody else isn't winning, I'm number two. If, if, if like, just not wins, I obviously he's number two. Damn it. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching, of course, and I see you in the next VPL battle. Until then, take care. Bye.